All right. I think we are going live on Facebook. It's happening. Which is super exciting. It is happening. So welcome everyone. I am going to double and triple check that this is happening on my page. Yep, it's there. It's there. So hello, everyone. It's super exciting. Hello, everyone. It is Shavana Marie. So who's Shavana Marie? And like, why are they on Facebook Live when people are just scrolling through their news feed? Who is in my feed? On the day. Exactly. Well, we're going to talk about something super, super important. (laughs) At least to us, right? (laughs) That's all that matters, Shavana. And the people that are coming to the event, right? So... (laughs) I'm Parat. I am a marriage and life coach, and I'm hosting the best event you will probably ever experience. On March 7th, it's called the Well-Made Woman event. And the whole goal behind this event is really to give women who have like that one area in their life that they know can be better, that they want to be better, that they have like actively been trying to make better. It's to give you a full day to spend on that area. So throughout the day of this event, you'll have the opportunity to gain a deeper level of clarity about what it is exactly you want. You will get a chance to explore all of the excuses and the limiting beliefs and all the things that sort of stand in your way of making it a success. You will actually spend a lot of time mapping out um, what it is you're going to do to like make progress in that area. So we have people, um, my panelists come from a lot of different backgrounds. So whatever you're working on, literally it's in the room. If you're working on your relationship, if you're working on your weight, if you're working on your money, if you're just working on how you feel about yourself and your level of fulfillment in life, like everything is there literally is a one-stop shop really helping you become a well-made woman in whatever area of life is most important to you right now Mm -hmm. and so today i am thrilled to introduce you to one of our awesome panelists marie deveau who will just tell you all about herself so marie why don't you just go ahead and like introduce yourself to the people and tell them what they need to know Sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Siobhan, for having me. I'm so excited about this event. And when you reached out, I was like, yes, because I know you do events like all the time. Um, And somehow just being in New York or River Away, it totally seems so far. (laughs) It's so funny because I tell people all the time, like whenever I meet and I'm just sharing this on my page for those wondering like why I'm not making the appropriate eye contact, I'm sharing this because it's so important. I always say like people from New York don't come to New Jersey, right? Right. But people from New Jersey are happy to go to, to go to New York, but like I'm bringing New York to Jersey. Like, right. You've done the impossible Siobhan, (laughs) (laughs) but I, but just so, so for people who don't know me, yes, my name is Marie DeVoe and I'm a, I'm a leadership coach and a small business consultant. And I love this work. I focus really on women of color, magnifying their voice in workspaces. And, um, you and I, Siobhan, we met at, a conference years ago, which I'd completely forgot. Someone asked me, because we saw each other at the Oprah event recently. I know, crazy. Which you're like waving at me and I'm looking at you like, why is Siobhan here? Like, I, I know, like, like, I know. like why are you, are you here? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, we met like years ago at, yeah. at, um, at, a, at an event and I've just stayed in contact and it's been amazing. Um, but I love events like that, that just bring like women together and like create community and get us to like, just kind of love up on ourselves. I think we don't do enough of that. Um, so really excited to, to participate in this event um, and share like some of my nuggets of wisdom and lessons and expertise around leadership and around small business. Um, so super excited for this one. Awesome, awesome. So tell us like, what is a leadership coach, right? Like if I were to like look at what you offer me as like a woman who's like, working and and that work right I I phrase it like that because people sometimes feel a little like neutral about Mm -hmm. work about their profession about what they're doing for a lot of different reasons and so if I'm one of those women that's sort of like I'm working at a job and I'm like this is my job this Mm -hmm. is what I do like 
how could you as a leadership coach, like what, what would you encourage me to think about or like, how would you approach the woman that's in that space? Yeah. So, so much of leadership is about how you're choosing to show up. Right. And really it's a, it's a choice. Right. Um, and so when we're talking about leadership coaching, it's really looking at, well, how are you showing up and what are the results you're getting? And do they actually align with your higher commitments and values in life? So a lot of the work, a lot of my clients come to me because they're finding that one, they're not asking for what they want in the workplace, mm -hmm. right? So there's some like selective mutism happening um, or they know what they want and can't figure out how to access it in their environment. Um, I think especially for women and I think twice as much so for women of color, there is this feeling sometimes that we can be super empowered and still not actually have any power in our workspaces. And so being able to navigate that and you know, it's coaching, so it's all conversation-based. I'm really looking at, well, what do you want? How do you wanna show up? And how can we embody that mm -hmm. through weekly practice? So you're showing up differently and as a leader on purpose Got in your it. space, yeah. Now, how did you get into this? Like, I know you are like a, a third generation entrepreneur, but like, yeah. did you just like wake up and graduate college and like start this business? Like, tell us a little bit about your journey and how oh, this became your thing. I love that. I just woke up out of college and was like, this is what I'm going to do. No, that's not, <laughs> that is not what happened. Um, I actually, I, I worked in corporate America for years and years um, in education management. I'm really passionate about education, about learning, about growth. Um, it's like one of my one, those are one of the things that I could do, like if money were no object, if time were no object, I would just like read things and absorb more and more oh information. Gosh, me too. Right? Like there's just, there's so much, like so many books, so little time. Um, and so I spent a long time in education and was always working in the management side of education. So looking at how do we create learning environments, how to create spaces where people are engaged, where we're driven by, and there's a lot of positive motivating force. Um, and that developed into me creating management training programs for how others can create those spaces, right? And so I found myself um, one day working in um, a, a charter school network organization where I was leading training. And so I was designing training and learning experiences and designing you know, the leadership career path and all of those things. And so I was doing a lot of this on, on a corporate level. And, um, and then like so many of my clients, I found I'd hit the ceiling. <laughs> There was nowhere left for me to grow to. There was no new, you know, wall to scale or um, new challenge to be met. And so just kind of looked at what I was doing and said, well, what are the parts I really love about this work and how could I create a life where that's the only parts I got to do? Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's what ended up happening. I ended up, um, I did some consulting. So I did a little side hustling before I transitioned into opening my practice. Um, but it was very much kind of the, net some of a lot of experiences I had along the way in a different career path. I like when you said that I got chills and I always know that when I get chills, it's like, that's it. Right. And so I love hearing that because my process is really similar. So it's sort of like, you know, when I thought about branching out on my own, it's one of those things where it's sort of like, ah. and, but I literally sat down and I was like, if I had the exact job that I wanted to do, that I would wake up excited about every single day. What are the things mm -hmm. that I would be doing in a given yeah. week? Like, what do I love about the career that I have now? What do I love outside of what I'm doing um, for my job? And how can I bring all of that together? And I think that's such an important point because for those who are watching, who are in a, you know, in a career, in a position, that you have skills, right? Like you're doing well in your job. It's not like, you know, you're worried if you're gonna, um, you know, be let go, but it's like, you're, you're doing well, but you have reached that ceiling or, mm -hmm. you know, you don't ultimately want to become the CEO of that company, or, you know, that the next level of, you know, leadership for you is not really what your heart desires. It becomes this question of like, well, what do I do? Like, right. do I jump ship and just go to another company doing something else? Or, and so I love the fact, and I think this is, this is the leadership part of like leading yourself and creating exactly what it is you want to be doing with the amazing skills that you have cultivated through, you know, your, your current employer. If, you know, leaving that organization, if making a transition of any type 
is really what you're after. So yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. Cause I mean, it's all about like, if you could do it on purpose, you know, yeah. what would it look like? <laughs> yeah. like so many careers were just kind of like, Oh, and then this happened and this other thing. And I just kind of found myself here and it's like, okay, well, what if you got to do it on purpose? What would you create? Like, what would you choose? And why not do that? Like everybody write that down. That's worth like $5,000 right there. If you could do it on purpose, what would you do? I like, I love that question. So, so powerful. So this event, Well-Made Woman, I feel like it's exactly what you are about. It's exactly what you help and coach people to do. Like, how would you describe that? How would you describe what it is in your life right now mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be like a well-made woman? What is that? Like? Oh my goodness. Well, one, I just love the phrase well-made woman. Like, cause it immediately, it has me thinking of like, things that are handmade and like crafted with love and like a lot of intention and care and are completely unique. Like you're never going to find a duplicate, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. that. And it's like whole and complete exactly as it is. Right. So like a lot of the work that I do is like with women and I, I have like this really crazy background we won't get into, but I do a lot of work like around like money mindset, around like identity and how we're showing up and also around like ritual and habits. Like how do we sustain ourselves? and looking at how all these different facets of ourselves play into who we are in the world. And if we can get like all of that in alignment, right? And we can show up as our best or like fully whole and like solid. Cause to me, that's, that's what it is. It's like well-made, it's like, this is solid. Like, I know I think about like the way my mom talks about old furniture, you know? Like a good, but like, I'm not talking like Ikea, like, but like right. solid wood furniture that's gonna stand the test of time has like staying power. That's how I think of this phrase of like a well-made woman. She's, she's one of a kind, she's unique. She's crafted with love. All the pieces fit together beautifully the way they're supposed to. It's so like total alignment mm -hmm. and they're staying power, like real mm -hmm. sustainability, right? Yeah. Here's a question I'm just going to throw out at you because I know you can handle it. Oh, right. I'm ready. It just like popped to my mind. Like what is the thing people ask you about the most? And what is the thing they need to be asking you about, right? So like oh, as a coach, it's sort of like people come to you with like their surface level questions, what they think is the problem. But as coaches, we always know that there's something deeper, there's something underneath there that they may not even have the awareness of to be considering that really will take them to their next level. Yeah. So that question just came to me. I know it's not what I told you I would ask you, but you know. It's okay. I love I'm it. I'm showing up as my authentic. It's all, it's all part of the intelligent design. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do you say to that? So interesting. So, so a couple of things come to mind right away. Um, I think when I talk about like magnifying your voice in business spaces, oftentimes um, a lot of my clients are women who have a lot of advanced degrees, super like expert in their field. And so they're looking at, well, I want a speaking platform. I want to start speaking or like, you know, so I get a lot of questions around how do I start speaking? How do I put myself out there? And that kind of thing. Um, that's the first thing that comes to mind. And then the other thing that I think people ask me about as well is, uh, you know, how do I, how do I scale a business? How do I just like start a business right away and get profitable, like right away? Um, and so I think with the first question, kind of like, what's that next level? Like what's, the actual, right? There's like the presenting issue, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And then you're like, yes. let's talk about the real thing. Yeah. Like the conversation we're not having. Yes. Um, because when people are saying like, hey, I want to get in front of a room. I have a message to tell. I always ask people when it comes to public speaking, well, what's the, what's the emotion that you want people to walk away with when you're done? Because mm -hmm. speaking is never about speaking. Speaking is about creating something. Mm -hmm. Right. And oftentimes it's not a tangible thing. It's, it's like a feeling, it's an emotion, it's an energy. So asking people, what is it that you're actually trying to create with that? Because the speaking is really, is really a vehicle for something else. Yeah. So are you, are you clear on like where your vehicle is taking you? Where do you want this vehicle to take you? Mm -hmm. um, and then with the kind of, I want to start a business. I want to be profitable right away. Um, I think this one's actually really funny because I do a lot of work with people around like okay, money mindset, like profitability, let's like get over why you're afraid and why money is getting in the way of you doing what you want in your life. Um, but the, of course, the underlying thing is, um, or for, for many, it's because people already know how big they could be and they're afraid of, it's not a fear of failure, it's actually a fear of success. Mm -hmm. 
Like yeah. who are you afraid you're going to get to be? Yeah. Do you create that? Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. let's talk about that. Like yeah. when you and Oprah are rubbing elbows, what's that going to feel like? And yeah. how, how much are you sweating right now thinking about it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And how much do you think that if you create it, it's all going to crumble in like a matter of minutes? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Like if I, if I try really hard, that leaves me open to, to fail really badly or to fall really badly. Yeah. Um, so it's better, better for me not to try. Mm-hmm. Um, just because skip all ahead of time. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll just, I'll just skip the middle part mm-hmm. and, um, you know, fast forward to the end where I, where I failed and I'm right back where I started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, I know you do, you've done some trainings on like transitions, like transitioning Mm. and career and things like that. What would you say, like for someone who's like unsure if that's really what they want, or even if they're just trying to like reduce the level of overwhelm they experience in their job on a day to day, or if they have a business idea and are trying to juggle like their full-time job and a side, like what would you offer people that are sort of in this, like, "Eh, I don't know what to do. Right. One fit in, one fit out. So the first thing that I'll say is it's all about uh, reclaiming your time, right? Like auntie Maxine got it right. Like it's all about like reclaiming your time. And so when you stop thinking about yourself, and this is, I think really true, especially if you do have a career that you're pursuing in a more traditional sense, and maybe you have this other thing that you do, but, um, just because you work for someone else doesn't mean you need an employee mindset, right? Mm-hmm. Your time is actually still your own. You still own all of those hours. You get to be intentional about what you do with it. And so taking some time to really look at what do I want to be creating with my time? How do I want to be spending my time? Um, I'm a huge proponent for like actually auditing your week and looking at, okay, what do you say is important and where do you spend your time? Yeah. Um, Cause it's eye opening. Like people are like, oh, yeah, these are my values. This shows up. And I'm like, okay, if you tell me your highest commitments are like family, community and growth, where are you making space for that in your life? Mm-hmm. Regardless of like the job and like the kids and the husband and all, like, where are you creating space for that? Where is that integrated in your life? Um, and I think that's really the first component is like coming to an understanding that the way you're spending your time now mm-hmm. is by choice, right? Yeah. And whether you're intentional or not. People are resistant to that though, right? They really feel like, no, my time is not my own. Like I have to do this. And yeah. well, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, you don't. I mean, you don't have to go to work. Right. That's a choice. <laughs> right. Right. Most of us <laughs> because you to don't want to be. Yeah, exactly. Right. There's, 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 yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there are higher commitments, yeah. right? Yeah. On the yeah. other side of making that choice. And if your highest commitment is like family, is community, is freedom, right? Mm -hmm. How can you start looking at where you're integrating those objectives into your time daily? How can you be intentional about that? Mm -hmm. And so I tell people like, it's not not about just like quitting your job, right? Um, But it's about how do I actually create the life I want regardless? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. Okay. So personal development events, right? You love them. I love them, really. Why should other people love them, right? Like if you're not a coach, right? If this is not the world you're in, like where you're listening to Audible all day and like- All day. How many, oh. Listening to podcasts all day. Siobhan, how many books are you listening to right now? Listen, I don't even know because let me tell you, like guys, I have to tell everybody the secret, okay? So I have Audible and like Audible- for those who know, Audible is an audio book platform where you get your books read to you, basically. And you get one credit a month, right? So it's it's with the membership. You can buy more credits, but right. I try to be like- right. Be conservative. Like, So what I've discovered is my public library has this platform called Hoopla, which is oh. basically Audible, where you, in my town, we get four- books a month. Okay. Free. Cause it's the public library. So before I use my audible credit, I always check this platform called Hoopla for those of you who need it. I'm writing it down. That's just my public library, but check with your public library. And so like, I have like five books out now because I'm yep. like, well, if I can get four here and one there, like I got to listen yep. to them all. But anyway, that was a digression. That was a side note back to for people who, you know, don't have the time and space to be immersed in this world all the time, like 
why is an event like this, whether they come to my event or not, like why is seeking a personal development experience mm -hmm. valuable and important? Yeah, well, so I think for all of us, there's always room for growth, right? There's always like, what's my next thing? How else can I grow? How else can I stretch? Uh, what else is available to me? What else can I create? And so when you go to any event, I, I mean, I love like conferences or like large scale events because what's happening is you're getting a lot of different ways that you get to grow all in one place, right? Because mm -hmm. not everyone's a big reader, right? Not everyone, you know, is maxing out their Audible account like you and I, but there, there are spaces where you can go where you, you can still get that feeling live and in person of just being like filled up, like, um, and having a space where you can actually, it's like a buffet and be like, well, what do I need? Can I get more of that? And then you can take it home and like delve even deeper, right? So it's a way to really like check out the buffet, find out what you like, where you want to grow, and then take that home in your carry out bag, right? And reheat that Snack later. Snack on it tomorrow. Yeah. Snack on it, right? Snack on it later, you know? So it, it's, it's that, like wh who doesn't want that? I mean, everyone loves a buffet. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And everybody <laughs> loves a snack later. Everybody loves a snack. Everybody loves a snack. <laughs> so you heard it. Okay. <laughs> From the leadership coach, right. And the life coach, like you need a snack. So you need a snack. yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Marie. Oh my goodness. You so but your much. audible story. I, can I share my audible story? <laughs> so, so, right. So as you've mentioned on audible, you get one credit. A month, right? Um, I, for the longest time, thought that you got two credits a month because my husband and I share our Audible account. You so I was, I was stealing all his credits. He's like, "Why can I never get a book? You can never get any books." And so, it, but it, it, we didn't realize it until one day I was looking in the library, and because we share the account, like I can see what he's downloading. We can share books, and he had downloaded something, and I was like, "I didn't buy this book. What is this?" <laughs> And I'm telling, I'm like complaining to him. Like, I think someone's hacked our Audible. Like there's books in here that I didn't buy. He's like, no, like I, I downloaded those books. And I was like, oh, oh, so we're sharing. I was like, oh, I've been stealing all of your credits for like a month, for months. I was like, this is amazing. Two books a month. This is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but no friends, it's, it's one book. It's one You're book. supposed to get one book. It's one book. Now, now I just have to, I'm going to have to look up what my local hoopla is. You have to, you have to, it's the best thing. Oh, Seriously. All right. So if you learn nothing else from us, like get Audible. Right, like, listen to a book. Like, yeah, listen to a book. Or just come to the event, right? Just, yeah, you know, or that. Yeah. Come yeah. get a full-on buffet. <laughs> full-on buffet. You will yeah. get a goodie bag of stuff to take home, for sure. <laughs> so thank you, Maria. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. I love stuff like this. I'm like, oh, we just going to talk for a bit? I can talk. We can talk. We can talk. So, Join us live for more entertaining conversations and really valuable conversations. So I think the nuggets that you shared are really, like if people really get it and allow some of these seeds you've just thrown mm. out there to really like sit and germinate and grow, I think they'll just have the opportunity to be so much more intentional about who they are in the world and the life that they're creating for themselves. Yeah. So I so appreciate your perspective. I'm so looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And we'll keep the conversation going. So thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you at the event, March 7th, Edison, March 7th. New Jersey. In New Jersey, y'all. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>